A genetically modified organism, or a GMO, is an organism whose genetic material has been altered using genetic engineering techniques. These techniques are generally known as recombinant DNA technology. With this technology, DNA molecules from different sources are combined into one molecule to create a new set of genes. This DNA is then transferred into an organism, giving it modified or novel genes. One of the most important issues facing GMOs today is labeling policy. This is represented by two arguments, the voluntary and the involuntary. The voluntary argument states that agribusiness should be influenced by the demands of the public, because currently the USDA and FDA state that GMOs are equivalent to non-GMOs. However, the involuntary argument states that a public has a right to know what is in its food, due to uncertainty of impact on health. The development of GMOs also has many advantages. With an ever-increasing worldwide population, the demand for food must be met. Genetically modified organisms assist in pest resistance. Pest-driven losses diminish crop turnouts, resulting in financial issues for farmers and the economy. GMOs also play a role in herbicide tolerance. Plants may be engineered to tolerate harsh herbicides, allowing these herbicides to target only undesirable organisms, such as weeds or grasses. Also, another advantage is disease resistance. An increase in resistant plant strains to many diseases would increase many crop yields. Plants may also be engineered temperature tolerant. Plants may be spliced with antifreeze genes to extend growing seasons, increasing the yield. Also, drought and salinity tolerance allows many farmers to farm previously unusable land. GMOs may also assist in the pharmaceutical market. The transportation, longevity, and consumption of vaccines may become easier using these GMOs. GMO technology may also allow scientists to increase the nutrition content in many foods. Finally, plants may be altered to cleanse the environment of pollutants, such as with phytoremediation. Hi, I'm Edwin Marty. I'm the director of Jones Valley Urban Farm. To be able to increase production from an agricultural point of view, which has a lot of benefits for a lot of different systems. Um, when you look at uh, the population explosion that's occurred in the world over the last 75 years, um, there's a lot of speculation that mm, that would not have been possible were it not for the radical changes in the way that people produce food. Um, as a direct result of um, genetically modified organisms in our food stream, we've been able to grow a lot more food. There's just absolutely no doubt about it. Most of the time, genetically modified organisms are pretty bad, especially when they're released into nature. However, if they're used in a controlled environment, such as in phytoremediation and living machines and constructed wetlands, genetically modified organisms can really help reduce pollution. You can genetically modify trees, such as poplar trees or other types of plants, to allow them to soak up more of the pollution from water or soil. And as long as you, you introduce these GMOs into a contained environment, a controlled environment, where they're not going to get loose in nature, uh, then, then they can be a great thing to help reduce the toxicity of soil and water. There's also been a pretty serious reduction in the, the difficulties in the production techniques, um, especially from a weeding point of view. Uh, there's no doubt that a GMO crops sort have of reduced the amount of uh, pesticides that it need to be used, especially in larger scale agriculture. So then, what's the problem? Genetically modified organisms seem to be very helpful in many systems around the world. However, many people around the world feel that GMO technology may be a ticking time bomb. The precautionary principle states that if an action or policy might cause severe or irreversible harm to the public or the environment, there is a responsibility to intervene and protect the public when scientific investigation discovers a plausible risk. Genetically modified corn, soy, and canola have cost the economy at least $12 billion since 1999. The economic deficit resulting from the production of GMOs are due to factors such as cost of development, lower crop prices, and the loss of exports. There are many health concerns surrounding genetically modified organisms. GMOs may biomagnify. They integrate into other organisms in the environment. For example, the bacterium Bt passed from corn into other related plants. Also, there is less nutrition content as plants are engineered to suit other purposes, such as transport, temperature resistance, and processing. Furthermore, many effects may only be realized with time. 
Uh, one of the pesticides we use is called BT or Bacillus thydrogensis. It's a bacteria that we spray on these plants. Basically, um, it infects the plant. When an insect eats the plant, um, the insect then ingests that bacteria that's on the plant. It disrupts their digestive system and eventually leads to their death. Genetically modified crops used in the synthesis of drugs are planted near or in the same plots as other crops. As a result, those other crops may become contaminated. Plant relations are not entirely understood, as plants exchange genetic material very openly. For example, Protogene corn modified to produce a drug for an oral hepatitis vaccine. Next season, soybean crop possessed traces of that drug. Let's look at this example. BT corn is planted into the ground. After a while, the pollen travels into the surrounding environment, carrying the bacterium BT with it. This can kill the targeted species, as well as non-targeted species. So it's a fairly inevitable situation at this point, as long as we continue to, to breed or to create genetically modified commodity crops with that BT in them, eventually insects will develop a total resistance and will lose that, that tool from an organic farming point of view, but also from a, a conventional point of view. So I think it's a real issue that, that we as a community need to be addressing. Does this make sense? Are there better options? One issue is seed ownership. Farmers save seed from crop yield to plant the next season's crop. Genetically modified organism producers have put legal restrictions upon reusing seeds. Seed producers try to force farmers to rebuy seed every season. This causes dispute between farmers and seed producers. The primary agricultural issue with genetically modified organisms um, has to do with ownership. What happens with genetically modified organisms is a company owns the right to that gene inside the seed. So by law, if you use a genetically modified organism seed bank, you cannot propagate those seeds, uh, which takes away the very fundamental ability for those farmers to be self-sufficient. Morality also plays a large role surrounding genetically modified organisms. There is the belief among people that food should be natural and that scientists should not be playing God. There is also the belief that it is morally right to know where your food is coming from. Be careful where you show your garbage and watch it, you scientists. Watch what you're inventing. Kind of keep hold of the fast lane. You know? We want to live long. <laughs> just don't have the bank of data that shows emphatically there's no possibility that these genetic, genetically modified organisms will impact our health in a negative way. You can't say that um, scientifically, and so my feeling is if we can live without them, if we don't feel like we can say that they will not impair our health, then why would we want to risk those, uh, those problems? downsides of GMOs both from an ownership point of view and then also from the fairly scary point of view of not really understanding what this technology is going to bring about. So will it be three-eyed fish, two-headed dog, or jort-wearing biology teacher, your genetically modified future is uncertain. Say if in 50 years we're still testing these things and it turns out to be with the right constructs to be beneficial, then I would be the a huge proponent, but I think at this point it's not a wise choice for, me, for us as a, as a civilization. In conclusion, genetically modified organisms have many advantages, especially feeding the growing population, increasing food production, increasing nutrition content, pharmaceuticals, and phytoremediation. However, genetically modified organisms also have many issues with them, such as the uncertainty that lies in the future, ownership of seeds, possible health risks, high expense of development, and genetic contamination. With the ever-increasing prevalence of genetically modified organisms, it is important to understand the truth about franken-crops.